the system wants to narrow this down to a two horse race between Donald Trump and a puppet who they can control. And it has become increasingly clear that puppet is not a Democrat. It's not even Gavin Newsom. It's Nikki Haley. It's in our own party. Well, today, one more step in that plot unfolds. Chris Christie drops out. Next up, I'm going to make a prediction. You're actually going to see Ron DeSantis join Nikki Haley's ticket. He's going to be her VP. The whole game, it's hiding in plain sight. Whatever it takes. And this system will stop at nothing. And I mean nothing to eliminate Donald Trump from contention. It's disgusting. But the same people who have said they're not going to actually take a principled stand against Trump's removal from the ballot. Haley and DeSantis are both in that category. Do the math, people. That's next up. Ron DeSantis is after Iowa. Everybody, including Chris Christie, apparently got a phone call from Ron DeSantis. Panicked was the word that Chris Christie used. This is the way the plot's going. Ron may not know this. Ron DeSantis may not know this. But that's what his donors are going to make him do. That's what's coming next. Ron DeSantis will become Nikki's VP. Whether or not Ron knows it, it's not really his choice. He's not the one in charge of that decision. And then the plot continues. Let's talk about uh, DeSantis and Haley. Both are saying they got tickets out of Iowa. Haley is <laughs> saying it's a two-person race now. I can safely say tonight Iowa made this Republican primary a two-person race. <laughs> I think DeSantis might disagree. How, what is their, their path, if there is one at all? We're talking about very narrow paths here, if at all. For Nikki Haley, it was going to go through New Hampshire. You're absolutely right. That second, third place finish, tight as a tick, Savannah. But Nikki Haley's trying to say, look, this is a victory. But she's been deprived of that momentum that she was looking for. Even when she gets to New Hampshire, who are her supporters there? moderates, independents, that's not necessarily a winning coalition to win the nomination because, as Steve just laid out, look at who put Trump in the winner slot in Iowa. In terms of Ron DeSantis, yes, he's stopping in South Carolina, but, Savannah, it's not clear that he can win South Carolina or New Hampshire because guess who has the lead there? Donald Trump. Let's run down the numbers for you right now. Donald Trump is over that 50 percent threshold which is quite an achievement. That has never been done before. Ron DeSantis right now, a bit of a surprise after Nikki Haley's surge. He's at 21.3%. Haley at 19%. That battle for second is really being fought tonight. I see what you did there. This is a line graph of the support for the candidates going back to the start of 2023. And you remember at the start of 23, Republicans had that bad midterm. The Trump aligned candidates cost them key uh, races. You had Ron DeSantis in some cases within 10 points of Trump nationally. That's why all these candidates emerged. They thought Republicans were moving on. Here's where it diverged. Trump's line went up. DeSantis's went down. Do you know what happened that week? That week, first week of March 2023, Trump was indicted for the first time in New York on the Stormy Daniels matter, it clearly brought a rally around Trump effect to Republicans. Four indictments and the trajectory goes up and maybe that's why we see him in courtrooms as much as the campaign trail, it's working yeah. for him. Nikki Haley has managed to do one thing for America and that is to unite Trump, DeSantis and Vivek supporters that she ain't it for the country. A couple ways to look at it, Savannah. I mean, first of all, the 51% that Donald Trump ends up with, that is a record in the Iowa caucuses. The previous best was 41%. And the margin here, it's basically 30 points, Trump to DeSantis. The previous best was 12 points. So he substantially improved what we've seen historically. Look, Trump improved, obviously, across the board. The biggest improvement, evangelical voters. He lost them double digits in 2016. He swamped DeSantis and Haley among them. The one interesting nugget here, I think, look, 99 counties in Iowa, you see that Trump read all over this. There's one county that Trump didn't win. And I want to show you how close Trump came to go in 99 for 99. Check this out. One vote. Wow. One vote in Johnson County, and if it had flipped, Donald Trump would have won there, and he would have gone 99 for 99. I can safely say, tonight, Iowa made this Republican primary a two-person race. I don't think that means what you think it means. 